goal setting with employees isn't easy. How can you be successful with it? What exactly should you pay attention to? I will give you my five best tips on goal setting with employees. Stay tuned. For more leadership advice, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. It's not easy to agree on goals with employees in such a way that they are actually implemented and achieved. During my time as a managing director, I also had to learn that uh, the hard way. When setting goals with your employees, what does really matter? Most companies do the following procedure when setting goals. Top management develops a strategy based on the company's vision. Then goals are derived from the strategy, strategic, tactical and operational goals. These goals are then broken down into divisions and departments and then the managers of these divisions and departments set their goals for their employees or, which is much better, agree on goals with their employees. So, as an example, the executive board sets the goals for the division managers, then the division managers with the department heads, and then the department heads set the goals with group leaders and group leaders with employees, and so on. The idea behind that is goals help the company to ensure that everyone, the employees as well as the managers, go into the same direction. So, Talking about goals helps to clarify on where to go, what to do. However, they must be the right goals. And it's also important how everyone deals with the goals. Before defining goals, we need to know why. Therefore, it all starts with the corporate vision and corporate strategy. If the why is not clear, if the corporate strategy is missing, well, then the goal is nothing you can grasp. Our goal for next year is to increase sales by 30%. Okay, and why? Why is it 30%? What do you mean, why? Because I say so. Why should sales be increased by 30%? Or why should a new product be developed? The managers should be able to answer these questions before breaking down goals. Goals bring focus, but they must not restrict the big picture and flexibility too much. This is, of course, a balancing act. I believe that if the achievement of a major goal is far ahead in the future, the goal should be formulated vaguely. John, how much money can we make with our biggest customer, the Siemens AG, in, in, in five years? And especially with which product groups? Uh, I don't know, boss. But I need the numbers. How else am I supposed to draw up a solid plan and budget for the next five years? <coughs> That's nonsense. Why should anyone describe the exact achievement of goals in detail which will arise sometime in, in, in five years. Until then, a lot can happen. And it will happen. However, this does not mean that goals and measures should be formulated vaguely in principle. I really like the approach used for HR project management. This is characterized by adaptive planning. So instead of making a comprehensive detailed plan at the beginning of the project, regular planning meetings take place at short intervals. In this way, you can react flexibly to unforeseen or unpredictable changes. So we need definitely a big goal, that's clear, but it's not specified in detail. But the short-term goal and measures for the next two to four weeks, they should be clear, they should be described in detail and agreed upon. Quite similar, you can deal with goals in a very volatile environment, even outside of project management. I give you an example. You have defined an annual goal, for example, sales or net income for the company. Based on this, you have roughly defined sub-goals and measures. Once a month, you can now discuss the sub-goals and measures for the next 30 days with your employees. This means for 29 days, you, as the boss and your employees, focus purely on short-term achievement of goals and on the measures to be implemented. And one day a month, 
you take the time to talk extensively about setting and agreeing on goals. Have you and your team achieved your short-term goals? If not, what was the problem? Did new things come up? Do the goals need to be adjusted? This one day is used to stay flexible, adjust the strategy, share a bird's eye view and to adjust the planning to achieve your big goal. A monthly rhythm may not be the right time frame for a large car company, but for a small, medium-sized company, for example in mechanical engineering, it can make absolutely sense. In this way, you have regular conversations with your employees, you can adjust goals together and you focus on the short-term implementations, but you do not neglect new ideas, impressions and necessary goal adjustments for the future. Unfortunately, only very few companies act like this. Many really think that's enough to formulate the goals once a year and then just check what you have achieved at the end of the year. In a volatile environment, this is not the way to go. Here are my five most important tips for your goal setting process. First, goals must be agreed upon. If you as the boss just simply set the goals for your team, this is not a good idea. You wouldn't get any commitment from your employees. Nothing will be gained from this. There will be no motivation to reach the goal. If you want to have actively thinking independent employees, you have to discuss and you have to get your team to agree on the goals. You have to ask, discuss and convince, not just set goals. Second, set verifiable goals. A goal always has a deadline. That's a must. It's also beneficial if the goal is measurable. Then it's easy. But very often goals are not really measurable. Nevertheless, the goal should be formulated in such a way that it is crystal clear for everyone involved whether the goal has been reached by the deadline or not. Third, goals need space. Those who lead with goals must not micromanage. Anyone who agrees on a goal with his or her team agrees on who and what and when, but not on how. Well-defined goals describe a desired outcome, but they leave open how it can best be achieved. The employee decides which measures must be taken to achieve the goal. It should be their creative freedom. Number four, focus only on a few goals. There's no point in agreeing on 20 goals with your employee. You get bogged down. Managers and employees should consider a maximum of three goals and agree on them. Number five, document goals and check them regularly. If you have agreed on goals with your employee, document them and check them along with your employee regularly. For example, uh, once a month, maybe also once a week, depends on the project and the employee. Goals only make sense if you check their achievement regularly. If you like this video, you might be interested in this video as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.